to everyone. Muli po, a blessed afternoon to everyone and welcome to our afternoon worship service. Please join us in our worship. May I request everyone to please stand as we sing a song. Let us sing the song, I Love to Tell the Story. All together on the first verse, ready, sing. I love to tell the story of us and things above. Of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my love. I love to tell the story, this pleasant to repeat, but seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never From God's own holy word, I love to tell the story. It will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. Amen. Praise God for that wonderful singing. For our opening prayer, may I call Brother Anthony Mensa to lead us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our love, dear Jesus Christ, we do thank you once again for bringing us back to honor your name and to glorify your name. We thank you for the love that you have shown us by dying for our sins. We thank you for us not hearing any new song or new story, but only the old one that you brought to us. That is what we continue to hear and we preach. We thank you for everything that you have done in our lives, what you are doing and what you will do for us. We thank you also for our second day of mission conference. Uh, we pray for the one giving us the preaching that continue giving him the wisdom so that we preach nothing else but only your name. We thank you and this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to our choir.
everyone to please stand up once again as we continue our worship through our music let us sing the song wherever he leads i'll go may this be our prayer as we focus on missions this month wherever he leads i'll go all together on the first verse ready sing take up thy cross and follow me i heard my master say i gave my life to ransom thee surrender your all today wherever he leads i'll go As the choir comes down, let's sing the third verse. My heart, my life, my all I bring to Christ who loves me so. He is my master, Lord and King. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Praise God for that wonderful singing. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon and welcome again to Baptist Bible Church. Good to be back in the house of the Lord. We're going to be again uh, blessed, challenged, and edified from God's Word. Amen? Amen. So let me just remind you of some few things. This coming Wednesday, our prayer meeting on site will be at 4, and then online will be at for, uh, on, online will be at 6 p.m. And also all the, our Bible studies for the young men. It will be every other Thursday as announced in our group chat. And also every Fridays for the young ladies fellowship. Uh, Bible study, I'm sorry. And then every Saturday under Radio Ajit in the morning and in the afternoon and also in the evening. We are also discussing about missions. Okay. So next Sunday will be our um, 
uh, paid promise commitment. Uh, so let's pray that this week the Lord will be able to uh, deal with us and then put in our hearts what amount we're going to give to missions this coming year. Our goal is 70,000 per week to be able to support 70 plus missionaries. Next Sunday, we'll be able to see who are these missionaries that we are supporting. Okay, so we will be able to see them. Okay, so also let's continue to pray for their pastor as he has, he has his uh, medical checkup this week. And that's, for those of you who are not here this morning, our pastor has something to say to us. So let's watch this video. Thank you, church, for praying for us. Uh, as we left, we had a good trip and got back safely. No big problems. And so that's great. I do have an appointment for my doctor uh, next week. I pray that you uh, pray with me that God will help the doctor know what to do to help me and to be able to walk get, and be able to have a breath not be out of my breath right now. And so, church, we love you. This is Mission Month. I'm glad that we have missionaries here who are going to help you to have a burden for missions and be a burden for our people to pray for missions every day. Pray for our missionaries. Whatever position they are and where they are, they need our prayers. So, I love you. I'll talk to you again later. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Pray for our dear pastor. Okay. Do we have anyone visiting with us for the very first time? Meron po ba? Okay. Kung wala, let's all please stand up and let's welcome one, one another. Let's wave to each other as we sing the welcome song, making each other feel welcome as we gather together in the house of God. There's a welcome here, a welcome here There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah There's a welcome here, a welcome here There's a Christian welcome here There's a welcome here, a welcome here There's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah There's a welcome here, a welcome here There's a Christian welcome here As we proceed to our giving, may I request the ushers to please come Let's pray for our offering. Our dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, this time as a church to worship you through our giving. We ask, Lord, that you uh, bless us as we provide the finances that are needed for missions as well as our church. Use these offerings that we are going to give, Lord, for the furtherance of your gospel. And we, Lord, uh, we continue to depend on you, Lord, to provide for our needs as, to, as we worship you through our giving. All these things I pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Sides of me thinkly, God has set eternity in the soul of sin, sick man. God has set eternity, nothing turns of destiny. Tell the grace that cries. 
Mr. City's BCZ, or in Frostic Scenes of Play, see the heart of the only man. Hunting doubts of misty gray, make them stumble on their way. We must reach them while we can. We must serve the loss of Calvary. Jesus' blood has space and penalty. Tell the grace that Christ brought down to man. We must reach them while Good evening and welcome to our evening service. And this morning we have a very special treat with uh, Pastor Kawili, uh, Missionary Kawili, uh, giving us a very fine challenge of us uh, joyfully uh, sharing the gospel and proclaiming Christ to the world. So I still remember the time that he, we last met. Uh, it was a time that uh, they were here for, I think it was in... Uh, a uh, time that he is going to speak, and wow, I am. I think we have a kindred spirit because we are all. We too are also uh, ha have a have a burden for expositional preaching, and we came to know uh, the Kawili family when we were first young people. When we were young people back then. In the, during the youth camps, and we often see them, and it was no surprise to see them, uh, to see uh, the, the Kawili, Brother Lindsay Kawili, uh, surrendered his life for the ministry. He studied one year in Bible college there in ba Bible Baptist Church in Cebu, in Katipunan, and graduated in Pine City Bible Baptist College. And he was accepted as a missionary by Asia Baptist Clearing House in 2005. And then after that, they went to China, they went to the mission field and invested 13 years of their lives there. Uh, we admire their courage and dedication in, in the face of so many uh, perils that they face there while they are there in the field. And thank you for being our missionary partners there in that place. And we are very much challenged because your testimony backs up the message that you, are, that you have been preaching. So we are so happy also for Mom Janice to be with us. Uh, pakitayo lang po. At ang kanyang mga three kids na si uh, Lawrence Spurgeon, Sean Everest. Uh, they told me that Sean means mountain and Ephrata faith. Okay, so at this time, let's give a warm welcome to uh, Missionary Kawili as he gives us the challenge tonight. Uh, thank you, Paul, Pastor uh, Sir Dennis, and uh, really it's a blessing to uh, have uh, friends in the ministry uh, and be able to continue and fellowship. Actually, before I preach tonight, I, I have a video presentation. I don't know if it's ready. Uh, I would like to show it to you uh, to give you a glimpse of what the Lord is doing in the work in China. Yeah. Hi, my name is Lindsay Kawili, 
and this is my wife, Janice. Hello. With my three children, Spurgeon, Sean, and Evrata. We have been serving in Southwest Asia, a restricted access nation, for 12 years. Uh, we were sent out by our church. June of 2006, and we left for the field August of 2007. When I was in Cebu City in 1997, I surrendered my life for foreign missions. And eventually, the Lord allowed me to visit uh, the mission field. And the mission field that we visited was a restricted access nation where our missionary was serving. And through that trip, I was able to uh, see the culture, uh, see the life of the people there. And it reminded me of uh, who I am, where I belong my culture, and if not for American missionaries who came to our tribe, to our mountains, uh, we have never have heard of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it dawned on me that uh, it's our turn to do the same. And uh, I was burdened to go to a certain people uh, called the Tibetan people, yet uh, due to the hardship of uh, staying in that area, uh, we situated ourselves on, on a nearby province. Our mission field, they mainly speak uh, Mandarin or uh, Fotonghua. And of course, uh, the first time we went to that place, uh, we're supposed to go and study the language. So God allowed me to study for almost like two years. And uh, it's not really easy. Uh, it's not like similar to any dialect in the Philippines. But uh, by God's grace, uh, uh, the Lord allowed us to be able to communicate. Uh, the population of our mission field is over 1.4 billion people. The city where we are situated is around 7 million people. And the whole province is around 40 million. So the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Just want to thank you to the Lord for giving me a wife who's been there uh, for for me through thick and thin, and uh, she has been a great encouragement and a great blessing to the ministry in uh, our mission field. This is my wife Janice. Hi everyone. Um, one of the hardest uh, part of living in the mission field, as far as I could remember, was the time when we were starting when um, I was juggling with uh, all the responsibilities of being a wife, being the mother of our three children, being the te their teacher, and being a friend to someone, and settling in that place. It was hard, it was um, a big, uh, big <laughs> adjustment. <laughs> adjustment. <laughs> But I thank God for His grace and mercy. Um, through the years, He enabled me. He taught me how to do it. Um, I thank God for my husband always being there, uh, guiding me and helping me in every way, in every way He can. And uh, my prayer request will be continue to pray for me that I will continue to follow the Lord in my life and that I will continue to be a help, a partner to my husband in fulfilling what the Lord has called him to do. Uh, by the grace of God, we are now uh, serving in our second church uh, called Spring City Baptist Church. Uh, the first one is called uh, Solid Rock Baptist Church and they have their own uh, pastor now. Mainly the ministry there starts with one-on-one uh, -on -one Bible studies with uh, college-age students until the Lord uh, could uh, slowly uh, give us some married men and professionals. Uh, it's not easy to evangelize there, but uh, mainly mo most of our ministry is underground. So uh, for people to be baptized, uh, uh, once they knew uh, their salvation and once they understood the implications of being a Christian. Uh, we saw that uh, it's not really hard for people to follow him in the waters of baptism. Uh, we would like to thank the church for continuously praying for us and supporting us. For now, we are praying to return to our mission field. 
but uh, it so happened that uh, the air tickets and even right now uh, the visa transaction is uh, 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 stopped for a moment and uh, we are praying that uh, the Lord will open uh, our ways especially with the finances that we need at the same time we are really praying for the church that we left behind we thank God that we have a preacher there named Brother Wylock and so please pray for him as he leads the, the flock and uh, look after them with his wife and uh, we're praying that they will continue to be faithful uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ no matter what is happening and of course please pray for their safety uh, as you know that uh, this time the situation of religious uh, affairs in China is uh, more of a dangerous situation but uh, we know that the Lord will be there and He will never leave us and forsake us. Thank you so much for uh, helping us and uh, allowing us to become a part of your missions conference. So I bring greetings from our uh, home church right now, High Crest Bible Baptist Church with my pastor, uh, Jesse Lobiano. And I uh, really thank God for the opportunity to partner with a wonderful church like uh, Baptist Bible Church. I think you are, if not, uh, you are the oldest uh, uh, Bible Baptist Church here in the Philippines. And it's amazing that you're still here. You know, pag ang isang church ay tumatanda na, I mean, uh, usually yan pababana. But by the grace of God, uh, you continue to abound in the work of the Lord. So we just like to praise God for that and I would like to preach on that part if you have your Bibles with you uh, please uh, open your Bibles to 1st Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58 but I would just like to read uh, verse uh, 57 and 58 and then uh, we'll jump to chapter 16 and try to go from there let's all stand up and let's read that uh, text uh, let's begin. Let's all read together, verse 57 and 58. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 to 58. Let's read. Ready, go. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, one more time, we seek your help. We seek your power. We seek understanding. Holy Spirit, may you illuminate our eyes, our hearts. May we listen to you. Uh, if there's anything in my heart or in our hearts that are not right, we seek for forgiveness and we seek that you will presence, your presence will be felt in this place and that Lord, we will be uh, challenged and be encouraged to keep on doing what you have called us to do. And not just to do it, but to go beyond, to go beyond because we have Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Ang upping title actually is Abounding in the Work of the Lord. And I think this is a very familiar verse to you. And uh, when was the last time you were told, sumusobra ka na. When was the last time na pagsabihan ka, sobra na yung kain mo? And many a times, when we look at that word, sobrahan mo, uh, pag sumusobra tayo, usually, masama po yan. Sobrang laro ng ML. Uh, yung computer games or ano man. And, and, and basically, we have this idea that anything that is beyond or sinosobrahan natin ay masama po sa ating katawan or masama po sa ating buhay. And uh, I used to drink coffee. I don't know, but uh, in Baguio, it's cold. Uh, we like to drink coffee. It's part of our culture. And uh, nung kami bagong kasal ni Mrs. ay napansin niya na ako'y umiinom ng maraming kape. At uh, around 10 to more than 10 cups a day. Black coffee, brewed, walang asukal, walang creamer. Drink it like a man. Yan yung sabi nung isang pastor. 
Pero sabi ng doktor, masama pala yung sobra. Yung apat na cups, okay na yun. Okay na ba yung apat? O isang isa na lang? Depende, baby, mas sobra eh. And, and it's really not good. But our text here tonight, if you look at it, therefore, my beloved. And by the way, you understand, pag may sinabing therefore, you need to see why it's there. So you need to go back and, and, and back up and see what is the context of what he's talking about. And when you look at here, he's saying, therefore, my beloved brethren, he's talking to the Christians, be ye steadfast. Be ye steadfast. And then, sabi niya, uh, unmovable. Meaning, wag kang kikilo, stay put ka lang. Maging steady ka, maging stay, don't, don't move to the left side or to the right. And look at this word, abounding. And that word abounding has the idea of going beyond. That word abounding there is to, to do beyond the normal. Kung sa Tagalog pa, hindi po masama ang sobra pag ang sobrang ginagawa mo ay sa Panginoon. And that's why he's saying abound in the work of God. Now, who is he talking to? He's talking to the Corinthian church. What kind of church is this? This church is filled with problems. They are a controversial church in the, in the New Testament. But when you look at this, every time that they have a problem, uh, the Apostle Paul will bring them back to the gospel, to the reason why they exist as a church. If you go to chapter 1, verse, uh, chapter 1 to 4, they're talking about uh, leaders. There's a division over leaders. Yung iba gusto si Paul, yung iba gusto si Pedro, yung iba gusto si, si Apollos, yung iba naman na mas spiritual. Ah, wala kami dyan. Alam mo yung lolo, and then yung lolo ko. Uh, kay Kristo kami. And, and they are trying to have a popularity contest over the leaders. But Paul would bring them back and say, Hey, who are these leaders? Who are these servants of God? They are people of God. They are servants of God. Why? Because of the gospel. They are here because of the gospel. You do not fight over them as long as they are preaching the true gospel. Man, they are the servants of God. You follow them. You obey them. And sana ganun po tayo. Mas magaling mag-preach kasi si ganito. Hindi yan sa pagalingan ng preaching. Ang importante, yung mensahe ay si Kristo pa rin ang ipinipreach. Ang, uh, ang intindihin po natin dito, yung content ng kanyang preaching is he preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he sharing Christ is the Savior? Hindi Christ the healer. I mean, he heals Christ, the one that will make you rich. Oh no, that's not the main point of Jesus Christ. He came and to seek, uh, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yun po pinaka goal ni Jesus Christ. You go to chapter 5 and verse, hanggang chapter 7, you will find their sexual impurity in the church. And Paul would bring them back and you understand the, the context of Corinth, it's a place, it's a port city. Daungan po ito ng mga barko where nandyan po lahat ng klase-klaseng kasalanan. Nandyan lahat ng klase-klaseng temptation, you name it. Everything is there. And so when you, when you go to this Corinth, there is a term to Corinthianize. It means you are, you are baptized with the culture of Corinth. And the problem with the church in Corinth, instead of them influencing the, the, the people outside the church, it was Corinth who influenced the culture in the church. Pumasok na yung Corinth sa simbahan to the point that they tolerate sin in the church. And so here Paul say, hey, why did God came to die on the cross? To save you from the curse of sin. To save you from sin. And so he reminded them that they need to put that man away. You need to discipline that person who is doing sin. And that is biblical. If there are people in the church, of course, there's a process. Matthew 18, you talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. 
Hindi makinig, maghanap ka pa ng isa hanggang to the point na hindi talaga nakikinig, you bring it to the church. But this guy needs to be disciplined because we need to have a good testimony to be able to share Christ as Savior. If we have no difference, kung hindi tayo, uh, wala tayong difference sa mga tao sa labas, then why should I believe in you? Why should I believe in the Christ that you, you preach? I remember Mr. Gandhi said, if not for a Christian, I would have been a Christian. Well, I don't know. I think he, he saw a, a, a person who claimed to be a Christian. But the way they treated you know, people is not Christian. That's why in, in here, Paul would bring them back. You go to chapter 8, the issue of, of food offered to idols. Uh, and, and some of them, okay lang kumain ng ganito, okay lang gumawa ng ganito. Some of the Christians, they, they have a stronger faith maybe, but some of the way they do things. That's why hindi lahat dahil tama, hindi lahat dahil okay, ay okay gawin. You need to be careful because it might be the way you do it is very offensive. The way you do it will, will weaken the faith of other people. Why? Because the goal of the gospel is not just to illuminate your mind but to change your life it's not enough that we have too much of 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 theology to the point that our life doesn't match the things that we believe i am not against theology but the theology that we have must match the way we live it was jonah jonah has a good theology and yet his theology doesn't match the compassion that God would want him to have for the people of Nineveh. He was saying the gospel or the, 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 the blessing of God is only for the nation of Israel. But God showed him, no, it is not for Israel only. That's why I chose Israel so that you can share the blessing, the compassion that you need to share all over the world. But Jonah said, no, the blessing is only for us. And so God showed him through all of the process by going to a wicked Ninevites, which during that time was the superpower. And that if there's something, why should God bless this nation with, the, with, with saving them from judgment? Yun yung tanong ni Ni Jonah. And sometimes our compassion is only to among us. There are many people around us that have never heard the name Jesus. We are thankful to the Lord for this country because we, we, we hear his name every day. You see it in bumper stickers. You see it in Edsa, Jesus saves. But in Ghana, in China, in India, there are many people that have never, in Myanmar, many people have never heard of the name Jesus. And that's why uh, we should proclaim his name. Now, if you go to chapter 11 to 14, their worship services became entertainment. Th these are from problems. There's no order. Uh, lahat gustong magpasikat. Lahat gustong magpreach. Yung iba naman, ah, wala yan. He's speaking in tongues dito, mas magaling. And so there is, there is, Magulo yung church talaga. Ako naman, mag-special number, so kanya-kanyang tayuhan, walang order sa church. Pero sabi ni Paul, Aba, ba't ganyan ang worship natin? And we know why Jesus Christ saved us. You know why He died on the cross? To give order to our life. That should be shown also in our worship services. That's why, praise God, na merong program, amen? Hindi lahat, ay, gusto ko mag-special number. Hindi, hindi lahat. There is an order. But it so happened that the, the, the culture in Corinth was this. The more you are out of your mind, the more you're closer to the spirit world. That idea went to the church. So the more na nagwawala ka dyan, nag-speaking in the dyan, you are closer to the spirit of God. But not necessarily. In here, we use our mind to worship the Lord. We think, we praise God, we look at the word. That's why when, when even in preaching, we don't just listen. We try to decipher what is the preacher telling because anything can happen. Tas yung mga kamay, yung mga kapatid. Tas yung, tas, tas. Kipakikuha po yung mga wallet. Mga wallet. 
Pakibigay po sa akin. See, it's easy to it's easy to deceive people. That's why you really need to look if what the preacher is preaching is from the Word of God. Kailangan tayong maging uh, in in the sense that we need to be truly uh, come to a point and understand and look if the preacher is speaking something from God's word. So there are some issues in chapter 15, the issue of the resurrection. Some of the members, they don't believe in the, in the resurrection. And Paul said, what? You don't believe in the resurrection? If you don't believe that, then what's the point of why we are here preaching God's word? No more. Because that's the even the cream of the crop, why we preach the gospel? Because Jesus Christ is alive. Kasi kung patay si Cristo, then all of our faith is vain. Now imagine if you are in this kind of church, will you be abounding in the work of the Lord? I believe you'll be discouraged. I believe you'll be sidetracked. But in spite of the fact that this church has a lot of problems, you know, Mr. Paul, was so positive that God can still do something great in this place. So he said, therefore, my beloved brethren, because all, because Jesus Christ, we serve a Christ that is alive, let's abound in the work of God. Let's, what is the work of God? We simply know this. It's to share Jesus Christ as Savior. That we will abound in in that area if there's something that we are doing today if you're soul winning if you're having bible study if you're in in sabihin mo oh pagod na ako the word of God says abound in the work of the Lord tuloy lang bakasyon ka ng konti pero wag bakasyon forever balik ka ulit tuloy lang I mean sabi ng iba sige para sa mga young people lang yan Habang buhay ka pa, you are called to abound. Bata pa ako, pag tumandaan, hindi. Habang bata ka pa, abound in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yung pong encouragement dito is for all of us to abound in God's work. And I pray as we go to chapter 16, because chapter 16 is yung nagbababay na si Apostle Pablo. But if you look closely, you cannot see explicitly there. You cannot just look at it. But when you look closely, deeper, you will find a man who is abounding in the work of God. You will find a guy who is always abounding. He is, sino sobrahan niya? Talagang patuloy kasi alam niya, hindi po masama ang sobra pag ang sobrang ginagawa mo ay sa Panginoon. And he will look, when I mean, you look at his, his letter here as he talks to the people of Corinth, you will find a man who is always abounding in the work of the Lord. So there are five things, I believe, or four things that I would like to discuss. And the number one is in verse 1 to 4, abound in your generosity. Amen? Abound in your generosity. Now, concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Now what is he talking about here? He's talking about an offering intended for the nation, or I mean for the people in Jerusalem, but because there's a problem. Meron pong famine, there is persecution, and they need help. Kailangan nila ng ayuda, nagkaroon sila ng problema, nagka-pandemic in the sense. So sinong tutulong sa kanila? Kapwa mananampalataya. And this offering is intended for another ministry. And by the way, this is where we get the faith promise principle. They have promised something to be a part of this giving. And, this, and, and out of their of resources, they promise to give an offering to the people of Jerusalem. Now, there are many purposes why Paul is trying to do this. Number one, one of the main things is that to help the unity of the Jewish church and the Gentile church. Kasi yung Jewish church, ah, talagang ilap sila sa mga hintil. Ayaw nilang makipagsama. Pero sabi ni Paul, sa pamamagitan ng offering nito, ma-feel naman ng mga taga-Jerusalem, ng mga hintil, mahal sila. Mga kapatid, your generosity does not just speaks about your money. 
It speaks about your heart. Kaya nga mga kapatid, it's really hard to be generous until you come to a point and understand the gospel of Jesus Christ in your life. How He saved you. You, you go back. If you're getting discouraged, if you're getting depressed, you go back to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and imagine what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross. Kung hindi siya namatay sa cross, kung hindi siya nalibing, kung hindi siya nabuhay muli, saan ka ngayon? Where will you be? Saan ang Pilipinas ngayon kung walang Ibanghelyo? Saan ang Pilipinas ngayon kung walang mga misyonaring galing United States? Kung wala sina Pastor Boyd Lyons, wala yung mga matatandang misyonaring na nauna na. Where will we be? But praise God for His mercy. Praise God, we are now a what they call a sending nation. We are sending missionaries and brothers and sisters. The world needs more workers. The Lord needs more missionaries, mga kapatid. And maybe one of you is God is calling you to surrender your life and say, God, I surrender my life for foreign missions. There's a need out there. Our ministry is not just here in this country. The work of Baptist Bible Church is the world. We will never become a true gospel you know, light, a gospel lighthouse of the Lord until we fulfill. And thank God that you are being involved more so. God is calling for men and women who will surrender their lives for the work of God. Now let's continue reading. Because it says here, upon the first day of the week. So we find here that this should be taken systematically. Upon the first day of the week, hindi po ito yung pabigla-bigla. Hindi po ito yung, you know, yung kamay mo, pumunta sa bulsa mo at Lord, sana uh, yung orange ang makuha ko sa ano, pang-opering. You know, hindi planado ito. Sa bahay pa lang, naka na yung offering. Hindi yung pasulput-sulput. Lord, nandiyan na naman yung missionary. Sana ganito ganyan. No, no, it's it's that's why it's it's amazing. We have a commitment this coming Sunday. That's why you desire uh, to prepare for that. This should be taken or given to the treasury. And of course, we find here upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. The word lay by him is you prepare it. Nandiyan na, sa bahay pa lang. Handa ka na. And by him in store as God had prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. Minsan may mga Christians, they give according to emotion. Ang ganda ng preaching, bigay nga ako. Huwag sanang ganoon. It, it should be commitment. Meron talagang ng number one. And, and really, this word generosity here, it, it talks about the heart. That's why a, a relationship with God, a, a walk with the Lord is so important here. As we continue, and when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your what? Liberality, generosity unto Jerusalem. Verse 4, and, it, and if it be meat, the word meat there means worthwhile. Okay, yeah, we can we can translate generous if your offering is generous. Ako mismo sasama. If it's a worthy of a uh, an apostle's journey, I will go with them to vouch itong blessing na ipupunta ko. And, and look at that, you will find they shall go with me. Meaning these offerings are accounted for by spiritual trusted men of God. Mga kapatid, yung mga offerings natin dyan, you know what? They go to the work of the Lord. And here for the Apostle Paul, he would want to have some men with him to bring the, 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 the offering. And by the way, if you understand yung offering nung una, hindi naman yan papel. Coins. 
Mabigat yan. Mahina na si Paul. Kailangan niya ng mga men na magbuhat ng sako-sako. At the same time, yung journey is not easy. It is perilous. That's why even Epaphroditus okay, oh, almost died because of bringing the offering to the Apostle Paul. Because during those times, it's really hard to send offering. Praise God. Merong Gcash. Praise God, my ABC. But during those times, it's so hard to send their support, to send an offering. And beside that, along the way, there are robbers. Uh, may mga hotel, pero during those times, ang hotel, ang, ang dudumi ng hotel, ng inn. You don't want to be in an inn during those times. That's why in Third John, you will find how do you treat a missionary? You be hospitable to them. And if it be, allow them to stay in your house because the safest place to be there during those times is in the houses of the members of church people. Kasi doon sa in, may mga temptation dyan, nandyan lahat ng rats and infestation of uh, any vermin and, 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 and prostitution and so forth. You don't want that missionary to go there. That's why I really thank God for you. For you have shown your hospitality. Thank you for the house. They opened their house, their mansion for us to stay. Praise the Lord for that. That's how you treat the missionary because they are represent, representation of the truth. And when you treat them that way, you become part of the advancement of the truth. And what is that? That is generosity. Yung generosity, hindi naman lang nakukuha sa pera eh. Nasa attitude yan, the way you treat, the way you look at people, especially the people of God who works in the work of the Lord. When you look at them, you don't look at them, oh, nandiyan na naman yung sagabal na, na, nako, nangunguha na naman ng offering yan. No, no, no. It should be an, well, praise God, what an opportunity to become a blessing. What an opportunity to be able to become part of the work of God. Abound in your generosity. Why, ilang missionary ba ang darating ngayon? Ilang kaya yan? Ang dami na naman nating susuportahan. I mean, the word of God says, abound in the work of the Lord. Bethany, Mr. Nabli said one time, Lord, kailan ba matatapos ito? Kailan ba matatapos ang mga magsusurrender na magmi-missionary? And then the Lord answered him, Leave it not the Holy One of Israel. My friend, it is not you. You know what? Daluyan po lang tayo ng pagpapala. Amen. Hindi po, hindi po nang gagaling sa atin. But you know what? The more you give to God, the more you allow yourself to be generous, you will be used of God to be a channel of blessing. Sinong mahilig ng milk tea? You know, ang dayu, daluyan ng pagpapala, depende yan eh. Meron yung pang milk tea lang. Meron din yung imbornal. Of course, yung imbornal, medyo, medyo masama yung ating pang pandinig yan. Pero, Kasi malaki eh. Pero daluyan yan. Anong klaseng daluyang gusto mo? Pang milk tea lang ba? O pang buong bayan? Yun po ang sinasabi dito. Generosity. Abound in your generosity. And you don't just give it to anyone. You bring it to the treasury of the church. And, and in this context, he's talking about the church. But during those times, the word treasury, where we get the word thesaurus, it... Lahat ng mga tanon, ini, pag gusto mong mag or you want to put your money in safekeeping, you go to the temples. Why? Because you, kahit yung mga, mga mandarambong o kaya yung mga, mga anong tawag doon sa Tagalog, uh, yung mga pickpocket, they don't like to go to the temple. Why? Because they're afraid of the gods. But in this context, brothers and sisters, it's here. You don't just give it to any TV preachers out there. You give it here. Bring it here. Hindi yung pag may nag sa sa bus, nandito po kami mag Mamaya may offering. Huwag mga magbigay doon. Magbigay ka dito sa church. Nandito po yung lugar kung saan tayo magbibigay. Be generous. Amen. Abound in your generosity. And I believe that is very self-explanatory. I praise God for this chart there that speaks of how you love the Lord and it's really helpful because truly, as I heard a while ago, we are all selfish people, amen? Naturally selfish. Pag merong group picture, anong unang pinanap mo? Yung picture ba ni Anthony? Hindi. Yung picture mo, 
Kasi we are naturally selfish. Kaya nga meron tinatawag na selfie. Talagang men shall be lovers of themselves. And truly, we are selfish. We post everything that we do. Na hindi man ang kailangan natin i-post. But the point is this. That's why we need to learn to be generous. It can also help us with our selfishness. We become more like the Lord Jesus Christ when we are abounding in our generosity. Second thing, let's go to verse 6 and 7. And it may be that I will abide, <clears throat> yeah, in winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. Verse 7, for I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord permit. Now you will see here, he's just talking, I'll be there, and uh, this is my plan, this is what we're going to do. And what is that? Paul is telling about his goals and visions. He is abounding in his goals and visions for the work of God. You see here a guy, while he is doing ministry, till thinking, Lord, what can we still do for the work of God? Is this enough? Is this it? Tapos ng missions compliment. Praise the Lord! Tapos na. Hindi. He is still praying. How can we follow through? How can we fulfill this one? He is learning. He is doing something. Why? Because he is not just abounding in generosity. He wants us to abound in our goals and vision for the work of God. 70 years na kami dito. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's one of the problems of being celebrating a lot of anniversaries. We have arrived. It's time to relax. I hope and pray that from until you die, until you are gone, we'll still keep on thinking, Lord, what can you do in this life that you have given in my life? Maybe you are here and the Lord is talking to you. Yeah, I'm now a member of the choir. I'm now serving. Lord, what else do you want me to do? Maybe God is calling you to surrender your life to be a missionary. You have done every ministry in the church. Now maybe God is calling you, Hey, go to Myanmar. Go to India. Go to Ghana. Go to Ukraine. Go to the South Americas. To Chile. To, to Paraguay or whatsoever it is. There are places in the world that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is 1.4 billion Chinese. Meron pa dyan, hindi pa nalista. <laughs> right now, all the missionaries that are there, Filipino, are gone. I mean, we're all locked down here. Brother Peter is no longer cannot enter. Uh, Brother Rod King, you know, me, they're having a hard time. But you know what? And regardless of the fact, the world is needing more workers. Whether you're a woman, whether you're a single lady. So what is your goals and vision for 2021? This is not just a specific work here in this church. But what else can we do? Maybe we need to start more local churches here in the Philippines. Maybe the Lord is calling someone here to start a work somewhere. Children. What can we do? What are your goals? Are you obeying your parents? Do you honor them? Do you respect them? Something like that. Maybe there's something, someone, young people here. I need to really reading, read my Bible more. Do you have a goal to finish the Word of God? A lot of Baptist churches, they only know their Bible because they have a table of contents. They don't know how to open where. Can you please open your Bibles in the book of Hezekiah, brothers and sisters? Okay, praise God. Alam nilang walang book of Hezekiah. Amen? Pero marami pa rin naluluko. Marami tayo nagpapaluko po tayo. May mga bagay sa YouTube na hindi lahat yan ay kailangan paniwalaan. Sabi ng iba, yung, Pili yung Solomon's Gold nandito daw sa Pilipinas. Pero merong naniniwala dyan na yung Mount Arara Arayat na nandyan doon yung yan yung Ararat ay yung nagdaungan ni, no, ni Noah. There are people. 
Brothers, what is your goal and vision for the work of God? If you're a father today, do you have family worship? Do you have devotions as a family? Uh, maybe you need to have a goal to come back to church this 2021, this, this end part. Wag mong hayaan pang online lang yung service mo. I mean, takot ka sa COVID, pero hindi ka takot sa SM pumunta, maglakwat sa doon, mamili ng bagay-bagay, mas maraming virus doon kaysa sa simbahan. Pero sabi mo, ah, sa simbahan may maraming virus dyan, baka mahawa ako. God wants you to be in here. And brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, there's no such thing as safety in this world. Your true safety is in the Lord Jesus Christ. If God wills that you die because of this virus, then you die, but still you're safe in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you, you, you either choose you die because you got your virus from SM, or you die because you got your virus from Bible Baptist Church. Pili ka! Abound in your goals and visions for the work of God. And by the way, we are doing all the safety precautions in this place. Imagine this one. This is safety precaution. I mean, this is not, hindi ito wala kang faith. Hindi, hindi ito yung, ay wala ka yung faith kasi naglalagay ko yun ng glass. Hindi totoo yun. Kaya nga may faith kami, naglalagay kami ng glass eh. Kasi ayaw naming mahawa ng covid at ayaw naming masirang buhay namin at mamatay kami kaagad at ma, 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 you know we will lessen the time that we serve the Lord it is just thinking intelligently it is not about faith it's about logical thinking it's about how you sige but but ka pa na face mask kung faith faith ka well I don't want to go and fight with someone else tonight <laughs> but the thing is, what is your goals and visions? How is your giving? Uh, I, I used to go and I remember that every Sunday, my father would give me 50 cents. Until now, I give 50 cents to the work of the Lord. Amen, Bayon? I don't think so. By the grace of God, the Lord have, learned, have taught us to trust Him. And I would like to tell you, He will never owe someone else. Because anyway, what we give to God is from God. He has the power to give you wealth. And, and it's a blessing that we can become a part of the work of God. Maybe you need to visit someone. Maybe you need to say sorry to someone. Maybe you need to forgive someone. I don't know the thing that God is wanting you to do. But as a church, what is our goal for 2021? And 2021 is gonna end. We're going to have 2022. Ano pa ba ang pwede nating gawin sa panahon na ito para ma-reach ang ating Jerusalem, ang ating Judea, ang ating Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. And that, my friend, is at the same time. Hindi lang po, oh, pag natapos na dito, sa kaganito, at the same time as the Word of God says. Abound in your goals and visions. Please pray for us. Because of our situation, we are praying and we are planning to enter via India. There's a part in India where is Siliguri, there is West Bengal, bordering Nepal, bordering Bangladesh, bordering uh, Bhutan and China. While China is not yet open for us, we are planning to minister there because there are also, aside from, from other nationalities, there are Tibetans in India where, you know, our heart is burdened for those kind of people. Yet, whoever God will bring to us. Uh, but that's still a, a decision we need to make and we are praying that the Lord will guide us. And specifically, I would like to ask this church to pray with us with that because, brothers, 
uh, if God closes a door, then maybe God has another door. Abound in your goals and visions. Let's go to number three. Number three in verse seven. Verse seven. The last phrase. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you. And look at this phrase. If the Lord permit. So here is Paul planning, but at the same time, at the end of his sentence, he would say, if the Lord permit. What is he trying to tell us? He is trying to tell us that he is dependent on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So if there's something that we do for God, aside from abounding in your goals and visions, abounding in your generosity, thirdly, abound in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Abound. Abound in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you look at this, this situation happened in chapter 16 of the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts. And so, verse 5, Acts 16, verse 5. And so were the church established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach in the word, the word in Asia. So you will find there. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia, and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the Word of God. Akala ko ba ang preaching? Okay. Okay. And, and yet, why did the Holy Spirit stop them? You go to verse 7. And they were come to Mycenae. They aside to go to Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. So, here we find this guy who is passionate about preaching the gospel, Everywhere that where he needs to go in verse 8 and they passing by Messiah came down to throw us and a vision appeared to Paul in the night there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying come over into Macedonia and help us now what is the point here not all that you plan though it's maybe biblical or what is what God wants you to do some of you are called to marry some of you are called to be single forever right some of us are called to go to the mission field some of you are called to stay here some of us need to be part of the choir some of us should not be in the choir kasi talagang hindi pwede you are not led wag mong pilitin but you have a place in the church you have a place in the ministry don't ever say oh wala akong lugar diyan no lahat po tayo dito meron tayong lugar sa work of god Kahit matanda ka, young ka, may ngipin ka, wala. Meron kang lugar dito sa work of God. The only thing is you be involved. Involved in the ministry and you will find out where God will lead you. But we need to be guided and we need to be abounding in our dependence on the Holy Spirit. Paul would like to go north. God said, no. He would like to go east? No, he went down south. No! Until he was going to the west. Tambang west. Dunya sa. Okay? What happened? He was dependent on the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And truly, that's how we should live. Sometimes God closes a door. That doesn't mean that God stopped doing something. He's still doing something. Find a place to minister. Nung una ang lakas-lakas mo, kayang-kaya mo mag-serve sa Panginoon. Pero ngayon, tumanda na ka, anong gagawin mo ngayon? Wala na akong gagawin, Pastor. Meron pa. Maybe God would call you to pray. And if there's a great ministry need right now, is the need for prayer in the church. Yan po ang nakakaligtaan na, na ministry natin na sa church is to pray hard, to pray the Lord of the harvest that He will send or that he will come down and get one and itapon niya doon sa mission field. That's the word there. When you pray to the Lord of the harvest, dadamputin ka niya at ihahagis ka doon sa mission field. But we need to pray. We need to pray for the men of this church that they will become active. Amen po ba? Na, na kailangan natin ng mga men sa church na sila yung naglilid ng Bible study sa bahay. Mga anak, halik kayo dito. Ano gagawin po natin? Pasensya na kayo. Naging unfaithful ako na tatay. Pero magmula ngayon, magbabible study tayo. Aba, 
Si tatay ba yan? Aba, magugulat ka. But you know what? When you depend on the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do something great for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hindi ako nag-Bibles. No, no, no. Come to Sunday school, okay? You will learn a lot. Do something. Find someone to disciple. Be a father to your children. Do something about it. A lot of our children, they grow up, they have parents, but they don't have fathers or mothers. They are just left alone. Bahala ka na gang. No. Parents, we need to be more involved with our children. We need to teach them the Word of God. And how can we do that if we're walking carnally? We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. So how do we do that? Sabi ng salita ng Diyos, And be ye not, what's that? Uh, and be not drunk with wine where any success, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's where in Ephesians. At yung word na yan, be filled with the Holy Spirit, is a command. It is something that we should have. And if that word be filled, it's not you who will fill yourself. It is God. And the idea there is really to allow the Holy Spirit. To allow the Holy Spirit to take control of you. To stop your, your anger, hat tempered cough since the beginning until now. Cool ka lang. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You are filled with a lot of things in this world. There are many things that are unnecessarily good that we are allowing in our lives. Too much Facebook, too much TikTok, too much information, too much news. Puro COVID na lang ang nasa utak mo. My friend, let the Lord Christ be in your mind. And what will happen? You will be guided with the Holy Spirit. Huwag kang pumunta doon sa horoscope. Meron pa bang mga Kristiyanong ganyan? Bumili ng inquirer, pupunta doon sa horoscope. Ano bang horoscope ko ngayon? Aba, ako is Scorpio. Tama po ito. Uy, maganda ang araw ko ngayon. I hope and pray wala nang baptist na ganyan dito. That we are guided with the Word of God and not the horoscope or mga pungsoy. Ay nako, hindi maganda ang sikat ng araw ngayong umaga. I hope and pray that we will not be guided by that. We will be guided by the Holy Spirit and we are guided. How can we be guided by the Holy Spirit? Through the Word of God. You will be guided through the Word of God. That's why we need to preach Christ as Savior. And how can you do that? You need to abound in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need more Christians who will live a life filled with the Holy Spirit. Because nowadays, we have too many carnal Christians living a life, living a double life. We are no longer serious about our Christianity. We are, you are okay na yan. Alam ko naman yan. No, no, no. We need to come back to the point where our life is engulfed with Jesus, engulfed with the Holy Spirit so that we can powerfully share Christ, Amen. our Savior. Abound in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we may have good plans right now, but God may have a better plan. You see, when I, I mentioned to you about our school, really, to be honest, bakit kaya ganun? God has a better plan. Maybe my <coughs> nabasted ka. Praise God. Maybe God has a better man for you or a better girl for you. Hindi ka natanggap doon sa ina-applyan mo. Praise God because maybe God has a better plan for you. But you need to be guided with the Holy Spirit. We need to be guided. Our desire for God may be good, but maybe it's not what God wants you to do right now. Sometimes you like to be in ministry or church, but this is where God put you. You might as well enjoy it rather than endure. Sana ganito ang church namin. Sana ganito. Hindi. It's you. Uh, wag mo nang asamin. You become a better you by being filled with the Holy Spirit. And this church will become a better church. Kasi wala pong perfectong church, mga kapatid. Meron at meron ka rin mapupunan. Sabi nga, you, if you found a perfect church, please don't go there. 
Because the moment you go there, it starts to corrupt, be corrupted. We should not fall for the idea that if it's God's will, it should be enjoyable. Sometimes God wills for us to suffer so we can enjoy future enjoyment. But mostly, it's all about our perspective. Kaya nga, minsan, akala natin, dapat lahat, every time, enjoyable. No. Going to church is not always enjoyable. Amen? Because the best time to sleep is on a Sunday morning. Napansin nyo ba yun? The best time to sleep is Sunday. Mayroong isang lalaki, ginigising ng nanay, anak, gising ka na, bakit? Linggo na, oy, church time na, ayoko. Pero gumising ka, bakit ba? Ayoko nga mag-church, sabi ng anak. Pero kailangan mong gumising. Bakit ba? Ikaw yung pastor eh. <laughs> Alam nyo ba, na hindi palagi yung pastor gustong mag-preach? No. But they preach anyway. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And I believe it's the same thing with you, going through all the traffic in Manila, just to come to buy. Mag-online na lang ako. At least dito, walang gasolina. Hindi ka magkagasolina. May merienda ka pa. Nakapadyama ka pa. Hindi ka na kailangan. No. But you know what? The will of God is for you to be here. If you are watching online, I would like you to know if you have the capacity to come here and you are not here, my friend, you are outside the will of the Lord. You need to be here. But of course, if you cannot, then so be it. You better listen to the word of God online. But the will of God is for us to gather together physically. Forget not the assembling. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Brothers and sisters, let's be abounding in our dependence upon the Holy Spirit. Fourthly, and last, plus three sub-points, okay? In verse 89, But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door in effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now, what is he saying? Abound in gospel ministry. That is his talking here. You look at verse 89. He's saying, but I will tarry at Ephesus. What will I do in Ephesus? Of course, preach the gospel. Until Pentecost. Why? Why is he saying that? For, for verse 9, for a great door. What is a great door? There is an opportunity, an opening for the extension of the gospel. It's so amazing that even during this pandemic, God opened doors for many churches to do something for God. Like yung pamimigay ng ayuda, there was a church in Baguio, they after, before the pandemic, they raised up money for the building. And lo and behold, here comes the pandemic. Anong nangyari? Sabi ng pastor, church will just use all the money to help the people of Baguio. And from one person, two person, it came to a point that thousands, I mean hundreds of people were given ayuda and they were able to preach the gospel because of that. Great door of opportunity. Effectual, the word there means needs a lot of work or labor. It's requiring great labors. It's an opportune time for great results. So sabi ni Paul, ganito ang plano ko, pupunta ako dyan. Pero sa ngayon, dito muna ako. What is that? Abound in gospel ministry involvement now. You don't wait for tomorrow to be involved in the work of God. You don't wait for later. Ngayon na, habang may buhay ka pa, ngayon na ang paninilbihan sa Panginoon. Kailang ka pa magsosurrender sa Panginoon? Lord, pag mag-graduate na ako, Lord, pag mag-asawa na ako, Lord, pag nagkaanak na yung anak ko, Lord, pag nagkaapo na ako, Lord, wala na ako, retire na ako, Lord, nandito ang buhay ko, pero ugod-ugod ka na, wala na, sayang yung oras. But it doesn't mean that old men cannot be used. No, no, no. Because if you remember Haggai, he worked a ministry during his old age. Three months of ministry only, preaching and helping the people of God to build the temple of the Lord. And yet he was used by God. 
in his senior years. Kaya nga mga men, mga old men, mga chartered members, your time is not yet done. While you're still breathing, God has a place for you to do, does something for you to do. And my friend, if the thing is just to sit down there and be an encouragement to the young people like us, Amen. If Lola can stay, can come and listen to the word of God, how much more I, who is so healthy and young, cannot come and attend church instead of being online? I would like to commend all our, our older generation for being faithful to the Lord. I was, I was listening to a lady this morning. Medyo bingi daw siya, kaya nagpapasalamat kasi sumisigaw daw ako. At least naririnig na yung preaching. And sabi niya, nag-outline siya, maraming outline. But I, I'm looking at her and she is excited for the work of God. What a blessing that is. What a blessing, what an encouragement that is. That there, there are, because we need models in the church. We need the men and the women. We are called to be models. If you go in Titus chapter 2, you are called to be models. Hindi na yung mga pastor. We are called to be models in the church. Kailangan namin ng mga modelo, hindi lang yung mga artista ang modelo namin. O si Lebron, o anumang klaseng tao dyan, we need models of the faith. We don't need, I mean, of course, patay na si Adonai Ram Dadson. Kailangan namin ng mga buhay na modelo. Kayo, mga kapatid. Kaya kung tayo nag-faithful hanggang mamatay tayo, what a blessing that would be. Why? Because we're looking. And, and, and today, yung mga millennials, they don't care about what you say. They care about what they see in your life. Example. Tayo tayo ng lahat mga kapatid. Oh, exercise lang ito. Okay, ganito. In the count of three. Okay, ganito. Count of five. Oh, praise the Lord. Sito na tayo. Okay. okay. In the count of three, magkaklap po tayo. Okay? Are you ready? Pag one, two, three, clap. Okay? Are you ready? One, okay, ready? One, two, three. That's a nine. Marami sa inyo, nag-clap two pa lang. Sabi ko three. Pero bakit kayo nag-clap? Kasi yun ang nakikita nyo sa amin, sa akin. And, and that's the thing that happens to many young people of Baptist churches. They are so excited pag young people, pag may kainan, pag may outing. Pero pag Bible study, wala na sila because they see in their parents a model that they care about God. You want your children to read the Bible? Do they see you read the Bible? You want them to pray? Do they see you pray? You want them to go to church? Anak, pagod ako ngayon. Kayo muna mag Sunday school. Kunin niyo yung kotse, ihatid kayo ng, mga, ng driver natin. Paglaki niyan, ah, si daddy nga eh. My children, I used to say to them, Dad, if they call me, Daddy, can you do this, do that? Okay, wait lang. Pag ako naman nagagtawag, Spur John, wait lang. <laughs> because they see us. We model things. You want our young people to love the Lord? We need older women, older men to model Christianity. And to be honest with you, the only models that we see right now are models of the past that we could not relate. And it's so hard. But right now, as, as we are in these times, we need a generation to model the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just in words, but in the life that we live. Abound in gospel ministry now. Sabi dito sa text, sabi niya, there are many adversaries. Pag merong opposition, anong gagawin natin? We quit, but Paul, did Paul quit? No, look at verse uh, 9 of Acts 19. Malapit na po tayong matapos. May two points, sub-points pa po. Okay. Acts 19, verse 9. And I would just like to read that 
for you. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way, before the mouth he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. What happened here? He was preaching, and then people were trying to persecute them. Umalis kayo dyan! So umalis sila, lumipat sila, hindi sila nag-stop. In the sense, there was a church in Olongapo. Alam nyo, lockdown, lockdown. Ang ginawa nila, they smuggled the young people. They went through the checkpoint. At pagkatapos nakalusot sa checkpoint, praise God, Lord! Ganyan. Tapos, pag nandyan na yung barangay, wiu, wiu, wiu. Okay, kayong mga nagalito, punta kayo dyan sa side ng church. They made a way. Why? Because they believe that church is important, mga kapatid. And I, when I was listening to the testimony, parang China yan ah. Parang ganun na nga. Nandito na yung China. Ayaw nating pumunta ng China. Kaya pinunta ng Panginoon dito ang China. Sabi ng iba sa akin, bakit ka pa babalik dun? Nandito ka na sa China. Well, that's a joke maybe. But you know what? God will do everything in His power to help us understand that we need to abound in gospel ministry. And not tomorrow, Today, today, and look, uh, many things I would like to say here. Um, the trials here, okay, let's go to, and, and when you look at this, pag nag-quit si Apostle Paul dito, when he was in Ephesus, then there were no seven churches in Asia that were established. Yung, yung churches dun da, sa chapter, yung sa book of Revelation, Pag nag-quit siya dito, he, if he did not intended to stay and be involved in gospel ministry now, you know what happened? Wala pong churches sa seven, seven churches of Asia na established. Sometimes we are thinking, ah, pag ganito na, no. The time to be involved in the work of God is now, mga kapatid. Do it now while you have a chance to do something for the Lord. Because when you die, you die. And mind you again, lahat po tayo dito mamamatay. I am sure of that 100%. 50 years from now, I, I mean, all of us might not be here. But you choose how to die. Either you choose serving the Lord or not. Now verse 10 to 12 of our text. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear, for he worketh the work. That's why I, I took this one. For he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. Verse 11. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. Verse 12. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you. What is this he's trying to say? Abound in gospel ministry, partnership. And we mentioned this this morning, but this is truly partnership in the sense that the gospel ministry cannot be a one-man team. I praise God for pastoral staff. I praise God for staff. I praise God for people that they work together. Here, Paul supported the team. Sino ba si Timothy? Mas younger preacher. Pero sabi ni, ni Paul, he is my co-worker. He is my teammate. Huwag niyo siyang takutin. Kasi matatakutin siya. Ano eh. Medyo mahiyain si Timothy. See that when he come to you without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord. May mga church members, talagang magaling silang magtakot ng mga servant of the Lord. Keep Tutunda, wala na tinukano. Talagang, you know, uh, they, they will go against and, and what happened, they will become discouraged. But here Paul said, you know what, Timothy, he is my co-worker. He is younger, yes, he is younger, but he is my co-worker. He supported the team. In verse 11, let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth. He supported the team. Sinuportahan yan. Hindi lang siya kung yan ang gusto mo. So, supportahan ta ka. Yun ang sabi niya. I will support you. And brothers and sisters, if there's something that we can do right now to be supportive, it's supporting the work of God. Supporting missions. Missions. Supporting the spreading 
of the gospel. Now, verse 12, Apollos was there and he said, I cannot come today, Paul. I cannot come. And Paul said, Anong hindi ka makarating? Alam mo ba na apostol ako? Pag sinabi kong pumunta ka dito, punta ka dito. Pero hindi niya sinabi yun. He was respective. He was very respectful. And he submits to the leadership of the Holy Spirit in others. Kaya nga tayo, hindi lahat pare-parehas ang ministry natin. Hindi ko mo ikaw nag-choir ka, lahat tayo magkwa-choir. No, meron po tayong kanya-kanyang kadalahan ng Panginoon dito sa iglesia ng ito. Huwag kang mainggit kung sa choir siya, ikaw hindi. Pero meron kang lugar dito sa iglesia ng ito. Why? Because the leadership of the Holy Spirit works in individual of us. What is that? Individual soul liberty. By the grace of God, we should be led by the Holy Spirit. And Paul here, he abounds in gospel ministry partnership. We need to work together. We need to unite to do God's work. Last under that is verse 13 to 24. And I don't have all the time to do it, but that is gospel ministry commitment. Verse 14, commitment to love. Verse 15, commitment to service and ministry in the church. Verse 16, commitment to servanthood and fellowship. Verse 17 to 21, commitment to be an encouragement. And verse 20 to 24, commitment to the truth, love for His Word. Because look at what He said, If any man, verse 22, love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranata. He is saying, kung meron mang tao dito na hindi nagpupunyagi ng totoong salita ng Diyos, let him be anathema curse. And Maranatha, let Jesus Christ come and curse him. Come, Lord Jesus, and curse that man. Why? Because he's not walking in the truth. Brothers and sisters, let's be commit committed to gospel ministry. Let's abound in gospel ministry. Now, be involved now. Let's abound in gospel ministry partnership. And let's abound in gospel ministry commitment. And that is one problem today. A lot of people are committed to many things else, but we're not committed to the work of the Lord. Si Jessica Soho, my commitment yan, kaya pinarangalan. Pupunta sa Marawi, pupunta sa ganito. Pero ang mga Kristiyano, saan tayo committed? I hope and pray that we will be committed to the work of the Lord. Let us abound in His work. Abound in our generosity. Abound in our goals and visions. Abound in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And last, abound in gospel ministry. Is the Lord talking to you about something? Do you need to surrender your life to the Lord? Do you need to increase your giving? Do you need to increase your prayer time? Do you need to find a ministry? Do you need to follow the Lord in the waters of baptism? I don't know, but there's something that God is telling all of us tonight. Hindi po masama ang sobra pag ang sobrang ginagawa natin ay sa Panginoon. Let's pray. Father, may you have mercy upon all of us. May the Holy Spirit help us that we may abound in the work of God. We ask your help now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we all stand up? And tonight, if the Lord has spoken to you, either pertaining to salvation, through the preaching of the word, it has been shown that you have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you take time would you take this opportunity to receive Him as your Savior and Lord? And just repeating His invitation a while ago, and if the Lord is calling you to full-time service, to be a missionary in another place, why not take this time in our missions month to express that decision to follow the Lord in missions? Is there anyone tonight? Last year, we have one who made a decision, and. She's now with us as a Bible student. And if there's anyone thinking that thought right now, why not pray for that? 
And if you're a believer and you want to follow the Lord in baptism, we would like to announce that we are willing to open our baptistry for baptism. And we will take the time to schedule you. Please communicate with the church. Is there one? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your challenge that you have given through the servant. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will be able to follow what you want us to do as you lead us by your Holy Spirit, whether it be in our giving, praying, and Lord, should you call anyone for full-time service, I pray, O oh God, that, you would, uh, that we would be brave to follow you in that regard. Thank you, God, for the blessings that we have received, both in the morning and evening service. And this we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, uh, would you please sit down? And we would like to take this opportunity to give our appreciation to our pastor. So may I ask the Kawilis to please come over, please come up front as we show our love and appreciation for them. But, okay. So, but before that, I know, may, may special number pala kayo, pero, <laughs> okay, so, okay, okay, so, okay, special number muna. Sorry, I forgot. As I look back on this road I've traveled, I see so many times He carried me through. And if there's one thing that I've learned in my life, my Redeemer is faithful and true. My Redeemer.
Okay, please remain here and may I call on the missionary couple to join with their children as we will show them our appreciation. Okay, let's give them one more round of applause. Okay, so we would like to give something to you and this one comes from the children's department who had been your uh, host for this event. Okay. And also, we would like to give one to uh, Brother uh, Spurgeon. And then to Sister Sean Everest. And also to Ephraim of Faith. We would like to show our appreciation to the pastor for speaking for us. Are you blessed with the messages that he preached? Amen. Amen. And also to Mom Janice Kawili. Okay. We're so happy that you came and visit our church and uh, you know what, uh, the testimony that you have given and also the messages that you have preached to today are really motivating us to be more involved in our missions. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you very much for your partnership and thank you very much, uh, Kavili family. At this time, uh, let's all stand up as I call on Brother Ingelbert to dismiss us in prayer. And let us pray. Lord, thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given to us, Lord. Uh, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the message that we have heard throughout this day, Lord. And Lord, may we apply it in our lives, Lord. And Lord, um, pray, Lord, that um, as we go to our separate ways, Lord, um, Bless us and protect us, Lord, and bring us back next Sunday, Lord. We pray, Lord, for uh, for the family of Missionary Kawili, Lord, and his family, Lord, that you will um, protect and um, as they continue your will, Lord, to the foreign field, Lord, that um, you may um, continually bless them, Lord. And, Lord, uh, we pray, Lord, also for our pastor, Lord, keep him safe and his family, Lord. All these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.